What up, what up, everybody? We're doing an episode of Beefy Boys Breakdown, Halloween edition, as you can see. And um, my costume, we look better as a family unit. And, uh, I'll get my, my partner, Harrison, on here. We're going over UFC 267 on episode 66 of the Beefy Boys Breakdown. Main card time, absolutely stacked, star studded, Fight Island. Let's get it. We'll keep it pushing because this is a moment we've been waiting for for way too oh, long. Oh, Smash, brother. Oh, Smash, Smash is back. And, um, yeah, get this first ranked opponent, you know, um, starting the real climb. So we're, what we're getting at is we got Lee Jingliang, the number 11th ranked welterweight, coming in as a plus 435 underdog. You would think he was fighting the number three or four guy in the division with those odds. Right. And they're fighting unranked Hamzat Shemaev, undefeated phenom, was as hot as anybody on planet Earth, caught COVID real bad, they had the long haul COVID. It, he had a couple of fights fall out. I mean, was in real bad shape in the hospital, lost a bunch of weight. I mean, all the pretty much worst case scenario for a fighter in the COVID era. And I mean, uh, I mean, his future was in question. And it was just crazy because there was nobody. I mean, he made he was making Sean O'Malley's hype train look minuscule, right? I mean, it, he oh, was the, the hype the train bell is, of the ball. Yeah, I've never seen a hype train fatter than than. I mean, you could argue Conor McGregor. Yeah. But Hamzat is right there with him. And it's crazy because usually, usually, whenever hype trains get halted for right, wrong, or a different, the reason doesn't matter why. Um, it's real. It's rare we see it, like, pick back up. Or at least maybe it does eventually after, like, two or three wins. But it's almost like fight week. They just, it, and good on the UFC for – for handling the situation in the way that they handled it, but they kind of just let him pick back up where he left off. Right, which, which I thought which, was smart. Like, like, don't knock him for getting, uh, like, sick and injured, however you want to, like, whatever you list that as COVID-19, whatever injury list you want to put that on. But also don't lower your expectations for him. Like, you need to keep him where he was because that's his spot. And, like, let's see if he's still that guy. Yeah, man. Um, and fighting in the welterweight division – uh, Hamza did struggle to make weight. There were some towel trick shenanigans. Uh, and mind you, Hamza has fought at 185 uh, uh, at least once, maybe twice. And so he is kind of a tweener, a little bit big for the welterweight division. Something to keep our eye on moving forward. Um, my, Hamza comes in at minus 600. So, like, all week and, and good on, once again, good on the UFC. They did their job. Like, they, the UFC was trying to convince everybody this was going to be a competitive match. I mean, it is technically unranked versus 11. Jing Liang is a good fighter. Um, I never bought it. I was um, obviously in lockstep with Vegas with this huge money line. I am uh, Hamzat all the way. I mean, there was the wild card factor. Um, I guess two different wild card factors of ring rust and of the COVID shit. But I was like uh, – What's the point of sitting out that long if you're going to come back when you're not ready? And again, they had seemed right. like if you would have fought six months ago, maybe those were bigger questions. It seems like, you know, I don't know. I just was giving him the benefit of the doubt. I mean, nobody was bigger Hamza dick rider than us at the hype of all the, the hype train, and, and, and we're right back on it. Um, but, yeah, man, I, but I, I got to be real. So by the time the fight started – I was kind of convinced that, like, okay, is this going to be competitive? And what I mean competitive, like, maybe make it to second, third round, you know? I, uh, did, you, did you find yourself, like, kind of so, more curious than you thought you would be by the time the fight uh, actually started? So, man, on the walkout, like, I got super built up because both guys seemed like they were pumped to be there. Like, even Li Jingliang like, like, was, looked like he was oh, yeah. super stoked to be fighting. And he and like, said and did all the right things all week and had the right vibe in the stare down. I mean, he looked like – I mean, he not looked like he believed. You know, that that's the first step. Yeah, absolutely. But, man, uh, my expectation was that, like, okay, this is going to be a real test for Hamzat. And, like, we're going to see a good fight. And it's going to be a, a two-round, three-round yeah. potential performance. Yes. Yeah, me too. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, especially since we had seen some other big money lines end up being competitive. So I did, I did, I had kind of, by the time 
I went from blowout. It was like the circle of life. I went from like blowout to like by the time the fight started, I was like, no, no, this is going to be competitive. To obviously, we got the result, which was blowout. Um, yeah, I mean, Hamza just absolutely dominated. So from the the first kind of they come together in the big engagement, Hamza pick literally just picks up Jing Liang like you would your little brother. Ducks under a Runs big right, up. ducks under a big overhand right, and gets on the body lock takedown essentially. Yep, carries him over to Dana, yelling at him, and, and then slams him down and just dominates. I mean, there was the ground and pound. There was uh, back taking. There was whatever he wanted to take place is what took place. Oh, it was crazy, man. I mean, he literally got on top. Now, here's here's where the, I was going to – what we're going to talk about because – Hamza got a bonus for this for this victory, right? And is this the one you disagree with? Nope. Oh, okay. I was wrong. I'm glad I know I was wrong uh, on that. I'm glad I know I was wrong on that because um, I thought this absolutely deserved a performance of the night bonus. Yeah, me too. Just based on the fact, like almost solely based on the fact that Li Jingliang threw one strike in this fight and he didn't land it. He was 0 for 1 in strikes thrown in this or in this in this fight, Hamza landed yeah. sixty-eight. Only one strike has been landed on Hamza in his entire UFC career, which is now four fights. That's a real statistic. Yeah, which seems like an unreal statistic. It seems super impossible and fake. And like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, that'd be like even like an NBA player shooting a hundred percent from the field for four games. Like that'd be. I mean, that just doesn't happen. Um, he, he's outstruck his opponents two hundred and fifty-four to one in four fights. So one. Two fifty four. That makes it seem like he's a, sh and then like he also out grappled his opponent a hundred percent of the time he's been well, he has, like he has a KO and three submissions, or TKO yeah. KO and two submissions. That's what it is. Yeah, and, and, and the way he was switching arms on the rear neck. He's so throat, comfortable. He's he so switched, comfortable like, back he switched, there, bro. I think what was it, right, left, back to right, or if not, it was left. It, it, right, he had it right left. at first, then went to the left, and then the final, the final one was the right. Yeah, and, and, and just Beautiful. I mean, so, so it wasn't just power and grace all at once. Like he has the freak athleticism with the techniques, with the fundamentals, with the explosion, with you know what I'm saying? With them in, with the intangibles as well. Like it, it it's it's he really, really is the total package. Oh, he's a monster and his post fight press conference was fantastic. Kill Sorry, everyone. He's like, I kill everyone. I tell you, DC, I kill them all. Anybody. I was like, I love this guy so much. I love it. I love Leading it up to the fight, so by the way, you know what I learned? He speaks Chinese. That's nuts. I didn't know that either. When when Li Jingliang was talking in the press conference, Hamza would like he kept reacting like as Li Jingliang was saying it, and I was like, Does he know what he's saying or is he just going based off mannerisms? Then the translator comes on and like translates, and then Hamza stops the translator in the middle of his like what he's saying, he goes, he translates very bad, brother. What he says is he wants to drink my blood, not that he thinks it will be a competitive fight. Ah, and I was wow. like, oh, whoa. Oh, man, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I didn't know that either about Hamza. Impressive guy. Impressive guy. I mean, he 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 gets it, right? I mean, he, he he's... I mean, what's next for him, right? I guess that's the only other place to go. I mean, this fight, we thought this was going to be competitive. We thought this was a test. We were all wrong. I mean. I'm glad you asked me what's butter. next. I'm glad you asked me what's next. And what I think is next is Neil Magny. Because right. eight. Eight? Yeah, yeah I, th I think that'll put Hamza close to like, because, well, Kiesa and Jorge Masvidal are tied at six. See, those yeah. were my two. Those were my two. I think Kiesa really, wouldn't be terrible. Well, I think it would be terrible for Kiesa. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just mean that, like... But you're right. I don't think Masvidal would accept that fight. Right. But I, I think, think Kiesa's Kiesa in a spot where he has it to. Be, be it. Or, you know what I thought, and it'd be interesting, there's not much in it for the, who I'm about to say, but... Steven Thompson? I, I was going to say Luke. Oh, no. Nah, Luke is he's so close to the title shot, man. After his but last think, victory. But I think, I don't know, man. We may be in a Makachev situation where 
Hamzat, like, the, like his next fight should essentially be a number one contenders match, like on some Pro Haska shit. I wouldn't mind seeing Leon Edwards and and uh, Hamzat throw down. Well, so Leon and Masvidal are booked, right? So, so that kind of right. answers both of those kind of questions. Or Gilbert Burns, maybe. Gilbert Burns says yes to everyone. Correct, and like his skill set would be super fun to watch against Hamza. It would be. I mean, but it's like I want to say, are we getting over our skis? But I don't think we are. Would Bilal Muhammad take a fight at nine? I mean, that's too. I, don't, I think. I think Hamza needs someone top five. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I think we're in a Makachev type situation where, like, he literally just fifty-eight yeah, to zero. Makes sense. Bilal Muhammad makes sense. I I just I think that like I think we'd be asking ourselves like what does this fight accomplish? Yeah, you know, if they booked him against an eight or a nine or a seven, like like he needs a top five guy. guy Lee Jang Liang? Right. right? Yeah. Like, so is that guy mean? not close? Like, I, because I, I like he see wasn't Paul Muhammad and Lee Jang Liang fight. You know what I mean? Or like uh, right? Or like I think that's kind of like we're talking tears here, and I just. Well, and Hamza's performance was so uh, like off the charts that you have to give him a big jump in competition because he just slaughtered the number eleven guy. Like you're not going to give him nine, eight, or seven essentially because like those should all be like seven couldn't do that to eleven currently. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I don't think Kiesa could beat Jingliang like that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So looking at I... it that way, it's like. Okay, well, he needs to fight Edwards or Luke or Thompson. Like, he needs to prove he's in that in that echelon. And then last once he's there, it's just title shot. Last night, in the moment, my my brain was telling me Chiesa and or Luke. Now, like I said, Chiesa is the more realistic of the scenarios because he's not in the position to say no. He's coming off a loss. He was barely in the top five even before that loss. So, like, if he wants any chance of the dream staying alive, he has to, you know, say yes and fight hard guys. And, and so you're right. I think the Kiesa one, I, I do think that's a little less fun, right? And I think that's probably like a less competitive match. I Luke, I think, is fun because it's like what it's almost like the storyline of like, it's way it, a it legitimately would be a number one contenders fight like that storyline sells itself and it's like the two young lions of the division right like they're the two next generation scary like the changing of the if the, if the changing of the guard happens it's going to be one of those two that does it or Leon you know Edwards Leon I mean? Edwards is young too yeah but he's been around so long that it's almost like he's not he's young but he's not fresh and he's not new and he's also built up a lot of ill will with a lot of fans like, I don't think the MMA that's, community is like that's the problem with Edwards, Edwards. Is, yeah, that's the problem with Edwards he just doesn't have the hype that and that it's Luke not and... fault of his own though he could have had the hype he, he oh yeah no it, it is his fault yeah I agree. yeah that's what I'm saying so it's like hey all right I'm not like trying to do you any favors essentially and his favors already been done this 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 uh, this Masvidal all fight is huge I don't yes. think this money wise huge for him too. Well, I, I don't know that. Does, I don't think it does for him what he wants it to do. But uh, we're, we're getting a little off the topic here. Final, I guess, Hamza Shemaev talking point. He didn't call out any of the names we just listed. He feels differently than us. He, he said anybody. He'll smash everybody. Doesn't matter. No, but also, did you hear what he said in the in the actual post fight? He. Uh, oh no, I didn't said, see that. He said Nate Diaz. No. Yeah, I don't want that. Doesn't do anything for me. I disagree with him, but he disagrees with us. I. Uh, well, I think Hamza wants money, and he knows he could headline a, a fight night with that. But Nick Diaz will never do a fight night, so like that's not or Nate Diaz. So that's like wait, did Nick or Nate? Nate. He called out Nate. Okay, yeah, like yeah, it's never happening. So no. Back so yeah. back to reality. We'll bring Hamza and we'll make him fight somewhere near the top five. Yeah, for sure, man. But man. How fun is it to be able to talk about Holmes out again? And Dude. how much more fun is the welterweight division? It feels so and good. Like, like, he's so good. How, how much better is the 185 division? He can still come up at 185 oh, whenever he beat uh, MG3. That was a 185 knockout. That wasn't 170. I'm so glad you said that. I haven't, like, the fan in me hasn't, like, given up hope. Now, if I was Hamzat's manager, I wouldn't probably advise it. No, he's fighting 70 till he goes up for the belt. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's the move. I, 
I haven't like the, the door's not shut on like the experiment, right? Like or maybe no. like, the champ champ business one day in the future. Seventy eighty five champ yeah, champ. That would be sick. Wow, yeah. what a creature. Yeah, no, I'm I mean I'm all in on the Hamzat hype train. We always have been though, so this right, is like, giving we us literally a chance. On it from fight number one on yes. Flat Island. Fight number two ten days later. Yeah. <laughs> And then after yeah. GM three, it was just like okay, this to the moon. It's a fucking rocket ship, fuck a train. Like, like I don't, and I, I hate when people say this, but people will say like generic sports takes like the MLB is more fun when the Yankees are good. The no, NBA it's not. is more fun when the Lakers. are No, good. it's better when the bad teams are good, in my opinion. Me too, but the UFC is more fun when Hamzat's here smashing, and I hundred percent, hundred percent, dude. Like, and, uh, uh, yeah, 